Okay, in the last video I talked about version control with Git and GitHub. In this video I'm going to talk very quickly about Heroku. Now Heroku is a web hosting uh, company, I guess you would call it, and primarily I think they started out hosting Ruby on Rails apps. They've since then expanded to Node, Java, Python, as well as PHP. So the cool thing about Heroku is it's completely free at small instances. Right, So if you're running a, an app that isn't going to get a whole lot of traffic, it's totally free. Now if your app starts to get traffic, you can add resources to your account and then it starts to cost a little bit of money. But that's, that's cool because it allows you to scale up as the traffic increases. So as your app gets popular, more people start to use it, only then do you have to start paying, which is really, really cool. Now there's lots of different places where you can host, especially PHP apps because just about any web server is gonna have PHP on it. And there's definitely some cheaper options than Heroku, but Heroku is really, really easy. It's sort of used a lot in the industry, especially for like Ruby on Rails and things like that. So I thought I would spend just a minute talking about it. And we're gonna set up an account here and walk you through deploying your code to Heroku. And you're gonna see just how quick and easy it is. So if you're not gonna use Heroku, you can skip this video. If you're interested and you wanna learn this stuff, it's kind of cool then uh, follow along. So I've just gone to heroku.com and I click the sign up button and here's the, the screen that I get. So you just type in your name, your email address, and then it says to pick your primary language. We're gonna be using PHP. I'm not even sure if you have to do that or not, but we're going to. So create, so almost there, check your email to confirm your account. So I'm gonna pause this video, go click the confirmation link in the email and I'll be right back. Okay, the first thing we need to do is determine whether or not we have the Heroku tool belt installed in our development environment. And whenever you want to figure out if you have something installed or not, usually you can type the name of it, followed by a space, two dashes, and the word version. So we'll do that this time, Heroku dash dash version. And since the version number did not pop up, we don't have the tool belt installed. But Cloud9 is installing it for us right now automatically. So it should take just a few seconds here. And what it's doing here is in installing the Heroku tool belt, which takes care of all the stuff behind the scenes that we don't need to worry about. It's gonna help us to push the code. It's gonna help us to execute commands at Heroku and all that good stuff. So there we go, it is now installed. So I'll clear that. The next thing to do is log into Heroku. And most of the time when we're executing commands for Heroku, we'll start them out by typing Heroku. And that's the case this time as well. So type in Heroku space login. And it's gonna ask you for the email address you used when you signed up for Heroku. And it's gonna ask you for your Heroku password. And don't worry, you can see there's a little block here so it won't show what you type as you type it. That's a security precaution. But don't worry, your thing is being typed so type in our password, hit enter. Okay, so now we are logged in. And the next thing to do is to make this all secure. And we do that this in the same, sort of the same way we did with GitHub in the last video, where we add our, our, our SSH key. So we do that by typing Heroku, oops, Heroku keys colon add. And it found our key. Would we like to upload it? Yes, capital Y. Okay, so that's done. Now the only thing left to do is create an app on Heroku. And we do that by typing Heroku create. And it's creating an app. And here's the name of our new app. And here's the URL. So let's open another browser and take a look at that. So you see this boiling fjord 3594, right? This whole thing here is just randomly generated. Yours is going to be different than mine. But don't worry if it looks a little weird. We're, I'm going to show you later on how to change this uh, so that you can use your own domain name if you want. But for right now, we're just going to keep this default thing the way it is. So here we have this default screen, and it's just a boring sort of nothing thing now. But this is production quality website right here. I mean, this is you're good to go here. So the next thing to do is to actually push... Well, actually, first, I'm going to go back to the Heroku dashboard and hit reload. And you can see here's our app right here, Boiling Fjord 3594. And if you click on that, 
you have access to settings. You can go in here and mess around with stuff. Uh, this is where you'll add a changes to your own domain name later on just by typing it in. We'll talk about that later. But uh, for now, we don't need to do anything right here. So let's go back. Now, Heroku requires certain files to be in your app in order to designate it as a PHP file and specifically one that we're going to need to add. So click here, new file and call this composer.json. And in this file, if we open it, all we need is an opening and a closing curly bracket. So we can save this, close it. Now let's push all this up to GitHub first. So type git add period, git commit am added composer.json file. Okay, git push, push that to GitHub. And we had some weird error. So I'm just gonna head over to GitHub real quick just to make sure that everything got Okay, so we've got our composer file. Okay, everything looks good. So now we just need to push this code to Heroku. And we do that with this command, git push Heroku master. And what's going on now is the Heroku tool belt is compiling our app, adding dependencies, doing all the weird little stuff behind the scenes that we don't know what it's doing. We don't really care what it's doing as long as it works. Uh, and sometimes this takes up to a minute or two, depending on how complicated your app is, how much stuff is there, how much work it has to do. Uh, but it looks like in this case, it's almost done here and boom, now it's done. So now if we go back to our Heroku URL and click reload, boom, this is my first PHP file. And that's our index.php page, All right? If we go back here and look at our index page, this is my first PHP file. If we look at our about page, this is our about page. If we come over here and type in about, this is our about page. So we now have a live production quality level website, web app running on Heroku, and we can send people to this address. Now this is the free version of Heroku, the very lowest costing thing, obviously. So not a whole lot of people can hit this app before it crashes. In fact, if we go to heroku.com, oops.com slash pricing, I think. You can see the different levels of pricing. And there used to be a slider. Here we go. And you can sort of uh, find out how much it's going to cost. A dyno is sort of like a resource. And the more dynos you add, the more resources you have, the more traffic your, your app can cover. So we're at zero right now, and that's free. The next one up is one, costs $25 a month. And you can read around here on this page what that entails and things like that. There's different other different packages you can get. And I'll leave that all to you to look through. Right now, we're just going to stick with the free one because while we're learning, the free is definitely good enough for us. And um, there we go. We are now deployed on Heroku. We're set up with version control using Git and GitHub. In the next video, we're going to dive right into learning PHP.